Good evening. Our liturgy tonight is the Order of Vesper, Vespers. Please turn there and please rise. Oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Psalm for tonight is Psalm 68, verses 1 through 6. We'll sing this responsively, and after verse 6, join together in the Gloria Patri. Psalm 68. <laughs> God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. As the smoke is driven away, so you shall drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so the wicked shall perish before God. But the righteous shall be glad, they shall exalt before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord, exalt before Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn, 581 verses 1 through 5, 581.
The first reading for tonight is from Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. And please rise for our second reading. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 15. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God, you hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Lent responsory. Deliver me, O Lord my God. For you are the God of my salvation. Master me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So far in our midweek Lent series, we have covered the first three commandments that deal with loving God. We call this the first table of the commandments. They are, again, you shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God and remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Now we move on to the second table of the commandments. These deal with loving our neighbor and tonight we'll consider the fourth commandment honor your father and your mother. Uh, some of the things I will be mentioning tonight are the divine majesty that all parents have hidden in themselves, how honoring our parents is the greatest of holy works, and then mentioning what was read in the first lesson tonight, this great promise that's attached to the fourth commandment. All right, let's get into it. Notice that the arrangements of the commandments is no mistake. They are very purposeful. And God is teaching us something by it. The first commandment is the greatest, of course. You shall have no other gods. When we finish dealing with the first table and how it is that we are to love God, the next commandment dealing with love for our neighbor begins with the commandment to honor our father and mother. And this teaches us the incredible distinction and honor that God gives to parents. They are the first ones to consider when we wish to fulfill great Jesus' great commandment to love our neighbor. Make no mistake, friends. Fathers and mothers are to be honored above all other people in this world. 
They are next to God himself in deserving honor, respect, and obedience. And that is because of what Luther called a majesty hidden within them. After all, our parents participated with Almighty God, creator of the universe, when we were conceived in our mother's womb. Our parents participated with God in sustaining life, at least when you were a child and needed to be fed and clothed and cleaned. So mark this, and this is especially important for young men and women who want to go out into the world and do good and make a difference and be people of influence. The greatest holy work, the greatest good work you can do for others is to honor and obey your parents. Luther was scandalized by those people who would leave home and leave work and go join the monastery thinking that by it they were doing something great and noble for God. But Luther said, One small child who humbly obeys his parents put all the monks and nuns to shame. Their work is far greater than all the works of of the monks and the nuns. And this is because the child who obeys his parents has the blessing of doing that which God has commanded in his word, whereas the monk or the nun does not. God has said, honor your father and your mother. We should rejoice that he has made it so plain and clear how we ought to love our neighbor and do that which is good. But what tragedy and shame that we despise this commandment. We look to a hundred other things and boast to ourselves that God ought to like us and be kind to us because we've done this or done that, and yet none of these boasts are about how we've humbly obeyed and respected our parents and other authorities. So why does God expect us to honor our parents? Why did he put it at the first of the second table of commandments. Why such deference, again, to parents? And why does he threaten his divine wrath and eternal punishment for those who dishonor their parents? Even our epistle lesson made note of that. God expects us to honor and obey our parents and other authorities, again, because there is a hidden divine majesty in them. They represent God to us. And if we cannot honor and obey our parents, who are earthly representatives of God, we will certainly not honor and obey God himself, who is spirit, who is the great authority above all authorities. Let's remember that God loves the world. He desires that we be saved and come to a proper knowledge of him and his son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that we might come to know God, the blessed Holy Trinity, and worship him. He gives us this commandment. And when this commandment is obeyed, there's peace in the home. People can go to church And there, gently learn that there is a Father in heaven who loves them and who gave them his Son to die on the cross for our sins. Now, the work and trials that come when we obey our parents and honor them and provide for them in their old old age may seem trivial or demeaning, but, but make no mistake. It's something pleasing and precious in God's eyes. Again, honoring our parents is the greatest of all the loving things that we can do for our neighbor. Go ahead and help the poor. Go ahead and talk to those who are lonely. Go ahead and visit the sick. These are all good things, things we ought to do, but they do not measure up to the greatness and preciousness of honoring our parents. Now let's get into some of the nitty-gritty on how to show honor to our parents We ought to show them honor with our speech and what comes out of our mouth and with our actions. You ought to refer to your parents affectionately and reverently. 
Call them daddy or mommy or father or mother. Don't call them my old man. And so on. Not only that, when you speak to them, it should not be rough, demeaning, or argumentative. And when you do things for them and when you ask for things from them, it should all be done without complaining and whining and petulance. And when you speak to others about your parents, it should be done with honor. You should not belittle them or make fun of them to others. Now, what about action? That is, how, how do we use our bodies and possessions and finances to honor our parents? And as children, this is easy to answer. We ought to use our bodies as children to commit ourselves to obedience to them. We ought to use our hands and feet to pick up the stuff off the floor of our bedroom when our parents say, go clean your room. We ought to help them with chores around the house. When we're older and leave our parents to establish a family of our own, we are still expected to honor our parents, and so we continue to speak to them and about them with honor and respect. And then we ought to use our finances, time, and efforts to take care of them and provide for them when they become frail. And this is the issue that Jesus was getting at with the Pharisees. You never stop honoring your parents. Even when they are gone, this commandment is still in force because all other earthly authority is derived from parents. Luther is careful to mention that there are four kinds or classes of parents or fathers that God expects everyone to honor and obey. First and foremost is fathers of blood, that is biological parents. And with this class, we can include stepfathers, stepmothers, those who who step into the role of being father and mother. Uh, they too deserve obedience and respect. Secondly, there are fathers of business. Uh, that is, those who provide work and income. They too are God's authorities and ought to be honored and obeyed. Thirdly, there are fathers of the nation, that is, human government, who provide safety and stability for the children under their care. God expects us to honor and respect such authority as these. The Apostle Paul gets into it in great detail in Romans 13. Lastly, there are spiritual fathers. This means pastors who shepherd and care for Christians and those in their care by teaching God's word to ensure that they grow up to mature faith in Jesus Christ and so gain eternal life. Paul said that these fathers are worthy of double honor. Now, what is implied in this commandment, honor your father and mother, but not stated outright, is that there are duties that parents and other authorities ought to be busy fulfilling. This duty involves physical and earthly things. So for parents, this means feeding, clothing, and cleaning your children. For employers, it would include making a safe work environment and things like this. But remember, the greatest duty for parents that is even above that which is common sense to all people, take, you know, providing for the physical needs of your children. But the greatest duty is that parents are careful to see that their children are diligently taught God's word so that they would come to fear and love God. And friends, this duty extends to all these other classes of fathers too. Government, too, should be in the business of ensuring its citizens have good preachers to go to. Businesses, even, should be careful to see to it that their employees can go to church at some t point. Of course, the great problem with the fourth commandment is that no one wants to obey authority. We love being the rebel. We love standing up for ourselves and thinking that no one can tell us what to do. And not only that, we who fulfill positions of authority fail miserably too. And we think our children are for our entertainment and enjoyment rather than gifts that God has given to us with duties to see 
but they're raised in the faith. And so God punishes the rebel and he punishes the lazy parent such that families, businesses, and governments are in such disarray and dysfunction as we see all around us today. But for those who are careful to honor and obey parents, God gives the promise that they will live long on the land. You can read that in Exodus 20. You can read it again in Ephesians 6 where Paul repeats it. And friends, we know this by experience. We do. Those who are humble children, who obey their parents, whose parents are careful to train them in the faith and teach them to submit to authority, live pleasant and happy lives compared to others. Oh, may God give us understanding of this commandment. May he forgive us our sins for failing to respect authority, to speak well of them, and to submit to them willingly. May God give us parents forgiveness for failing to train our children in the ways of the Lord. God grant us his Holy Spirit that we would all do our vocation that we would honor our parents and other authorities and so live long in the land. Amen. The peace of God that transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the canticle. <clears throat> Let my prayer rise before you as incense.
please rise for prayer, beginning with the Kyrie. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Great to see you. Have a nice evening.